Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm a librarian at the Cosby Library and Community Commons. And in this video, we'll be learning how to do the Japanese style stab stitch notebook that is included in the adult craft to go bag or the adult craft casual bag uh, for the summer. If you weren't able to pick up a bag, I hope you can still follow along and maybe assemble the supplies that you will need yourself. The supplies for this activity are actually just paper, so some sort of cover paper. I used scrapbooking paper and then computer paper for the inside and then some waxed, uh, ideally linen thread. You can use other kinds of threads, but the traditional um, material is a waxed linen thread. And you'll need, if you don't have the kit that was provided by the library, you will also need something to drill the holes like a power drill or a, a leather awl and you will need some cardstock to make a jig. Um, you'll see a few other supplies that I use later on in the video. This is another one that maybe it's good to watch the video first and then go back and make your craft. So I had planned for this to be a little bit more of a complex activity where you would actually make the jig and make the holes yourself, but I found that that was a little too hard to do without some specialized tools. So I thought instead I would talk a little bit about this binding and its historical uses, because this is actually a very old binding technique. So this is an actual uh, Japanese book. It's actually written in English. Um, it's not very ancient. It's, you know, it's from, from modern times more or less, but it does use this very old style of binding. This is actually um, a binding that I redid myself because the original one had broken, but you can see I used the same holes that had been used. And you can see that they use this very typical uh, lightweight, very flexible paper, almost like uh, what we think of as Bible paper. So this is a technique that's been used to bind books for probably several hundreds of years in Japan, and it's one of the many different non-adhesive binding techniques. So Western books um, and modern books today, modern machine-made books, use adhesive to hold the paper together, and then there is some sewing along with that. But there are many, many non-adhesive binding techniques. This one's called a buttonhole stitch. You can see this is a, another simple stitching method. This really complex one right here, this is called a caterpillar stitch. So you can see it actually goes onto the cover. And then on the spine, there's some more stitching. So this is just one of many different non-adhesive binding techniques. And if you find that you're really interested in this topic after you complete your craft, there are lots and lots of YouTube videos out there. There are even books about non-adhesive binding. So this is a really rich area of exploration that you might find that you're actually really interested in. But let's get on to making our notebooks. So what you will need out of your kit is simply your two packets of paper and your needle. And you will also need some scissors eventually. So I have my scissors. And you may also need a rubber band. And you will see how we use that here in just a minute. Now, if you don't have a kit at home and you want to do this just all on your own, let me explain what I have here. So this is, um, I don't actually think this is linen. You know, sometimes you buy stuff online and it turns out not to be what you expected it to be. I'm using this bright orange color so that hopefully it's easy for you guys to see. But ideally you want some waxed linen thread and do not burn the edge, do not burn the ends to make that little, um, that little bulb at the end. We want to be able to fray this. So don't burn the ends like um, you might see me do in the beaded bracelet video. You do want some clips. And then this is just scrapbooking paper and computer paper. Now, if you're doing this on your own at home, I want you to know that grain of the paper is very important. And what do I mean by that? If you take a piece of paper, so this is a quarter sheet of cardstock. If I try to bend it this way, it really resists. It really pushes against my hands. If I try to bend it this way, it's really easy. I can feel less, much less resistance bending it this way. When you're doing this kind of binding, you want to make sure that your paper wants to go with the fold that you're going to be making. So in my finished examples here, 
if I'm going to actually open this up and use it as a notebook, it fights me a lot less if I go along with the way that the paper actually wants to fold. And that's very, very important for this technique. So if you're making your own supplies at home, make sure that you're paying attention to the grain of your paper. And if possible, you might want to get some slightly nicer paper um, than computer paper, something that has a nice, nice drape. That's what we call, when you saw that really thin paper in the Japanese book, something that drapes nicely will will lay flat, will, will uh, fold over really nicely all on its own. But if you're using the materials out of your craft pack, make sure that you don't switch the threads. Um, I realize that you may not be happy with the colors that I picked out for you, and I do apologize if that's the case, but um, this binding that has the more holes on it, you're going to need a longer thread for that. So you need about five times the length of this notebook for this binding, and then you need four times the length for this binding. And as far as my holes are concerned, if you're at home and you're making your own uh, kit and you need to punch these holes yourself, this is about a centimeter to the edge of the paper here, and this is about one and a half centimeters right here. And then I just tried to space these two holes out fairly evenly. Same thing with this one about a centimeter and actually about a centimeter here. You don't want to go too much closer to the edge than a centimeter otherwise you might end up tearing your paper. So let's go ahead and get started. Now there is a way to do this where the knot is hidden. That's a little bit more of an advanced technique but if you feel like you want to go for that right away I encourage you to look up maybe another video on YouTube and it will show you how to hide that knot. I'm just treating it as sort of a decorative element in these bindings, so I'm not going to try to hide the knot, but if you do want to hide it, you have to do that right from the very beginning. So your very first step will contribute to you being able to hide the knot later. So if you're going to do that, uh, go and look up a different video. If not, if you're fine with the way this looks, go ahead and follow along with me. So we'll start on the simpler binding. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to thread my needle, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fingernails to try to flatten out the end of this thread. This is a size 20 tapestry needle. And so by flattening out the end of my thread, it makes it easier to get it through that eye. And I'm going to start not at the end hole, but I'm going to start at the second hole down. So you want to make sure that your pages are lined up. And I like to go ahead and kind of stick the needle in there to sort of hold everything together. And once your pages you feel like are lined up to where you can get through all the holes, there we go, go ahead and clip your book together. So I'm going to use the book, the, the uh, clip off of this book and that'll help hold everything together. That's just a little helpful hint that might make things a little bit easier for you. So I'm going to start from the second hole and you want to leave a fair amount of tail to work with later. So maybe, what is that? Maybe three inches or so. And the key to these binding techniques is anytime you have a chance to go around the spine you want to take it. So here I am. I'm gonna bring my thread around. I'm gonna go back through that same hole. And try not to split the thread. Try not, try not to put your needle into the thread so that way you can kind of tighten up your binding later. I'm going to go up to the next hole. Again, now I have the opportunity to go around the spine again, so I'm going to take that opportunity to go around the spine again. Now I need to change directions and start going back the other way, so I'm going to do that. So here's the other side. 
So I'm going to do that by wrapping around, going back through. And that completes that corner. And at every step you want to make sure that it's tight and then it's lined up the way you want. So now I can go back into this hole. And I've already gone around the spine here. So I'm just going to go right back up to the next hole. Again, here I have that opportunity to go around the spine, so I'm going to take it. And I'm going to keep going towards the end I was going towards. I'm not going to go back and try to get this just yet. I'm just going to keep going towards the same end of the book that I was heading towards before. I have an opportunity to go around the spine, so I'm going to take it. And I'm going to finish that end. And now you can see I just have one more space on this end, or on this side, rather. And now I just need to come this direction and I can tie off my binding. So again, I'm not 100% sure that this is actually linen thread. Linen thread holds a knot really well and unfortunately I found that the thread that I got does not want to hold a knot very well. So normally you would be able to just do a simple square knot to finish off this design. And by the way, I like to actually slip this underneath here and I'll see if I can get it to go through without splitting any further. There we go. So I like to actually slip it underneath here before I make my knot. So unfortunately this thread doesn't hold a knot quite as well as I would like. So we're going to just sort of invent a knot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first half of what's called a surgeon's knot. So it's a little bit like an overhand knot. So an overhand knot, um, in this case, I'm going to go right over left and through the middle. And now instead of going ahead and pulling that all the way down, I'm going to take this thread and I'm going to put it through again. And when you pull this all the way down, you'll see that it makes a tighter knot than just doing a single overhand knot. And in a regular surgeon's knot, you would just go ahead and do another overhand knot on top of that. So it's sort of like a modified square knot. Now I tried a bunch of different knots and I found that the one that holds the best for this thread is actually this kind of knot, the one where you take both threads and you twist them around, make a circle, and this is why you want your tails to be nice and, nice and long. So loop them around, put the tails through the middle, and then pull them on through and pull them tight. You may want to pull each end individually. And I find that this knot holds really well for this thread. Uh, again, if you're doing this on your own or you're doing more later and you have the ability to actually look at the thread before you buy it, you might want to make sure that you're buying 100% linen thread. And the colors might not be as bright or as pretty, but it will hold a knot better. And I just like to fray my ends to make them a little bit more decorative. You don't have to do that. It doesn't really add anything to the stability of the knot, but to me that's just a nice little touch at the end. And there is our four hole binding. I'll be back in just a minute to show you the other binding style, the slightly more complex one. Uh, I do want to mention, because I forgot to mention it before, if you're doing this at home and you are drilling the holes, or you're using an awl, which is what this device is. So this is an awl, uh, AWL, meant for leather work. 
you want to make sure that the hole ends up being about 1 16th of an inch uh, in diameter. And so I found that the drill bit that gave me that was actually a 5 64ths drill bit. So just a little note if you're making this at home, that that's the size of drill bit and the size of hole that you're aiming for. So again, I'll be back in just one minute to do this slightly more complex one. I'll show you a trick with the rubber band. I didn't have to use it for this one, uh, but I'll show you what this rubber band is for in my next uh, binding. All right, let's move on to our second binding. So this is the one that has more of a zigzag pattern to it. And again, I'm gonna be using this orange thread so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. I'm only going to use one clip this time. The clips are sort of optional, so if that doesn't seem helpful to you, then feel free uh, to not use them. I just think it helps to hold everything in place. Now, kind of like before, uh, you can. these are sort of decorative holes up here, so your real like working holes are these down here. And so just like before, we're going to start on that second one. And again, I want to leave at least probably like a three inch tail to work with later. And because I'm close to the spine, again, I'm going to take that opportunity to go around the spine. Now, before I forget, let me show you what this is for. So if you find that your hole is kind of tight and that you have trouble pulling the needle through, try not to move the needle too much from side to side because you can actually break the eye of your needle. Um, needles are pretty fragile these days and they can break off fairly easily. Um, again, if you do need to rebuy a needle, if you break it or you get uh, it gets lost, this is a number 20, size 20 tapestry needle. But let me show you what you can do. You can use a rubber band to give you a little extra grip and pull it on through. Some people actually use pliers for this. I think that kind of just uh, increases your risk of actually breaking your needle to use pliers. But if you find that the rubber band trick doesn't work, then maybe break out the pliers. Okay. So I have pulled my thread tight around the spine. Here's my tail. I'm gonna keep heading towards this direction. This is where I was planning to head before, so I'm gonna keep heading this way. I'm gonna go to the next hole in the sequence. Now I'm not close to the spine, so I'm not gonna try to wrap around the spine. I'm gonna go to this next hole. But now I am close to the spine this time, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my spine wrap. I'm going to do it again to finish this corner. And you can see that back here, only logical way for me to go is to go back and finish this part of the design. If I flip back over again, Again, the only logical place for me to go is right here. And this is one of those spots where, you know, if you feel any resistance, you might just want to go straight to the rubber band to kind of help you pull through before you risk breaking your needle. Okay. Now I've already gone around the spine, so I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to move on to the next hole. And this one's further away from the spine, so I'm not going to go around the spine. I'm going to go to the next hole. And now around. You can do this all from one side, but you probably want to check every once in a while and make sure that everything is lining up. But if you have a really good sense of where those holes are, you don't need to keep flipping back and forth. So again, I just moved on to the next hole. I'm doing that again. And now I'm close to the spine, so I'm going to wrap around the spine, go through again, and then keep progressing towards this end of the book. Now here I am again close to the spine, so I'm going to wrap around. And you can see how this worked really well as like a mass manufacture technique almost um, in Japan. In Japan they use handmade paper, that's why they get such a 
or they did historically use handmade paper, which is why they get such great drape on their paper. Handmade paper does not have that grain that I talked about. So I finished that end. And now, logically, where am I going to go? I'm going to finish this part of the design. And finish here. And there are all sorts of really, really complex patterns that you can use for this style of stab stitch binding. And you can end up with some really beautiful results. But even with something simple like this, it can look really decorative. So here I'm just basically filling in the parts of the design that are obviously empty. And now the last part to fill in is where my knot is going to go. So again, I'm going to take it under. And you can do this with a needle. Um, I'm going to take it under so that I actually have something to do my knot around. And I'm going to do an overhand knot right over left. And then I'm going to go around one more time. So I'm going to go take that tail and go back through one more time so that I have two twists. Pull down. So that first half of that surgeon's knot. And then once again, I'm going to do And there we go. And all I have to do is trim off my tails. And I won't make you watch me again um, fray the ends of my thread there. But you can see now we have two new little notebooks that you can carry in your purse, carry in your pocket. Uh, very handy. You can make these, uh, again, as gifts. It's a great activity to do with teens, something that they can personalize and really make their own. Um, and I hope you enjoyed learning about this historic technique.